which of the following integers has the greatest value? So you look at these integers, 100,000, 110,000, 102,000, 100,000, 100,000. So clearly, this is the largest one. In the diagram, 30 identical small squares are shown. How many of the 30 squares are shaded? Well, just count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So 15 are shaded, and therefore number 2 is C. The value 2 to the power of 3 minus 2 plus 3 is. So we've got uh, 2 to the power of 3, which is 8. Minus 2 plus 3, which is 1. So that looks like 9 to me. Number 3, answer is C. If 3 plus a triangle is 5 and triangle plus square is 7, the value of 3 triangles and 2 squares. So 3 plus triangle is 5, so that means the triangle is 2. And then the triangle plus the square is 7. So 2 plus the square is 7. So the square is equal to 5. So therefore, this, which would be 3 triangles and 2 squares, would be 3 times 2 plus 2 times 5. And that is 16. So the answer for number 4 is E. The expression 3 over 10 plus 3 over 100 plus 3 over 1,000. 3 over 10 plus 3 over 100 plus 3 over 1,000. Okay, let's add this. Common denominator, top and bottom here, 10, top and bottom 100. And that would give me, let's see here, 300 plus 30 plus 3 all over 1,000. And that's 3, 3, 3 over 1,000. And as a decimal, it's 0.333. And therefore, number 5 is A. Uh, just as a very quick aside, very recently, I gave a math contest uh, to somebody, uh, somebody I know who's like 22 years old. And she, you know, she graduated high school and everything. And I gave her, this was the question. And she sent back, this was one of the questions. And she sent back the answer 3 over 9, which reduces to 1 over 3. Now, as you are clearly aware, this is incorrect, but it just gives you an idea of, and I'm not trying to make judgment here, but it just gives you an idea of how weak some people's math skills are that a 22-year-old person who graduated high school does not know how to add fractions. If 1 over 3 of x is equal to 4 and 1 over then 1 over 6 of x is equal to 2. So if a third of x is equal to 4, that means x is equal to 12. So then they're saying what is x 1 sixth of it? Well that would be 12 over 6 and that is 2. So number 6, the answer is C. Jurgen is traveling to Waterloo by bus. He packs 25 minutes for 25 minutes. He then walks the, to the bus station, which takes 35 minutes. He arrives 60 minutes before the bus leaves. He leaves, and the bus leaves at 6.45. What time did he start packing? So we got to work backwards here. Bus leaves at 6.45, right? And he arrives 60 minutes before, so he arrived at the bus station at 5.45. And then 35 minutes for walking, and 25 minutes for packing. That's actually a total of an hour. So he started packing an hour before 5.45, which is 4.45. And that's all this is. You're just walk, uh, tracing backwards. And therefore, number seven would be A. A sign has 31 spaces on a single line. The word rhombus is written from left to right in seven consecutive spaces. There is an equal number of empty spaces on each side of the word, continuing from left. In what space number should the letter R be? Okay, so first of all, we have rhombus. That looks like they're saying it's in the middle. Equal number of spaces on the uh, each side. So rhombus is 7, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7. So the 31, we've got to subtract 7. And when you do, that is 24. 
and then there's equal on each side. So on each side, there'd be 12. So there'd be 12 spaces here and 12 spaces there. So what are they saying? Counting from left, when what space number should the letter R be? Okay, so there's 12 up until this point, and then the R is the 13th space. And I think that's it. So B. The decimal representation of 1 over 11 is 0 0.09. Repeat. Another way to write this is 0 0.09 with a bar. Similarly, 0 0.125 bar represents the number 0.125. Repeat. The decimal representation of 1 over 7 is 0.142857. Repeat. In the decimal representation of 1 over 7, the 100th digit to the right of the decimal is. Okay. So 0 0.142857. This repeats, right? So every 6, it's going to repeat. And you, get, you guys get the idea. And to me, it looks like the 6th number is 7. And then when you repeat it again... The twelfth number will be seven, and then when you repeat it again, the eighteenth number will be seven, and you guys get the point. So it looks like that's how we're going to figure out what is the one hundredth digit because there's a pattern here. If you keep going like this, uh, eventually you get to the point where you will eventually get. These are multiples of sixes, right? Six, twelve, nine. So dot 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 one four two eight five seven. Uh, this one would be a multiple of 6, right? So I think 96. Yeah, that's a multiple of 6. So then, therefore, if we do it one more time, we'll get the 100th guy. This is the 97, this is the 98, this is the 99, and this is the 100th number. And that's the 8. So 8 is the answer, and therefore number 9 is D. In the uh, diagram, points A, B, and C are plotted on 7 by 10 grid line segments A join A, B, and C. An ant walks directly from A, B, A to B to C to A along the line segments, the distance the ant walks. Okay, well, some of these we can just count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so that's 5. It's pretty easy. Then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, so that's 8. And then we just have to figure out from C to A. Or you can just use Pythagoras. 5 squared plus 8 squared is that AC squared. And then when you do this, you get uh, 25 plus 64, which is, I think, 89, right? So 89 is AC squared. And therefore, AC is root 89. So the total would be 5 plus 8 plus that root 89. And that is 13 plus root 89. And therefore, number 10 would be D.